Hello and welcome everyone to Chaotic Roll. The one D and D show that's not as famous as Um what is it? Critical Roll? But I like to think as like a DM who is very average at this. I'm actually pretty good. I at least have to think positively about this, because everyone says I'm good at this, and my mental health says I'm not. So I have to think at least a little positively about this, because otherwise I just go into a spiraling depression. Uh, mental health is a, is a thing that affects millions of people, uh, possibly way more than that. And, uh, mental health awareness all the time. Fuck it being a month, fuck it being a week. It's all the fucking time. And that's my rant. Welcome to my TED Talk. Well, there's a difference. And hello! Oh, hello there, Zach. Oh, hello. Previous. Ni hao. I think I've said this for everybody, but I'll say it again for you. Sorry about my audio quality being a little bit worse. I'm not home tonight. That that is perfectly fine. And today we're um doing this what is it? Um Zol was an idiot and didn't make a dungeon yet. So, this is Theater of the Mind. Okay. Be because I'm an idiot. Well, not really an idiot, more like I'm lazy, inherently lazy, and um, stuff. And I procrastinate way too much. That's okay. We, we aren't quite in the dungeon quite yet, too, so... That is true. You are... Out. Well, Morphos don't need that spell because I can just fireball it. And I. Uh, that is correct. And I forgot I was muted because I do that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> fireball solves everything. Uh, except you. Um, not really because you only have like two spell slots of it. And. I can always create more. Like once. Eh, a couple times, maybe. It, it, well, if you, like, convert all your first level spell slots into sorcery. Exactly. Points. Exactly. Why would I need those first level fireball? You're roboting, then. Uh, it looks like she dropped out. At least, well, perhaps it's done. We lost Callan on uh, roll 20 anyway. Hmm? You, you're, it doesn't say that you're on roll 20 right now. Yeah, because it's supposedly low, being weird, and slow. I don't know why. Well, um... Last time you guys fought the shadow versions of former comrades, and you guys leveled up, and uh, you got, I assume you all rested in the ruins of the goblin camp, so are you going to go, go back to the tavern to... Um, Get your reward. Yeah, I vote on going back to the tavern. We, for the we absolutely should, especially because Odalyn just popped back in, which is fine um, if that's the route we want to take with that. Um, but unless that's what we want to say happens, it would make sense for Odalyn to be with us now. It works for me. Yeah. 
Okay, so it sounds like we're back uh, headed back to the village. Or to the guild hall, I guess. A village. Do we run across any troubles on our way there? That is an excellent question. I want to roll a luck dice. You all have amazing luck and uh, don't need anything on the way there. Cool. Can okay, I so I couldn't hear like the past what happened because for some reason it deafened. I don't know why. So what happened? Oh, we're on our way back to the uh, guild hall to collect oh, our okay, reward good. for our previous quest. Good, we can experiment on the tiefling. How about uh, you so... don't experiment on the tiefling? And if you're going to forage Nafara, that will require a survival check. That was a pretty bad roll. Oh, oh well. Um, you managed... Well, what are you trying to find? Uh, I am trying to find ingredients for health potion. Um, okay. Well, you managed to find... On the way back, you don't find anything for health potions, but you do find some ingredients for, say, a... Oh, sorry. You, you do find herbs and spices. That's what you find. Awesome. I'm fine with that. <clears throat> so, uh, no one gets into, like, any trouble because of the amazing luck throw you got. And, um, because there's a ranger in the party, travel is fine, because of course there is. Uh, and you guys make it within all the same amount of time it took last time. I'm just going to say that. Just trying to remember that is, uh, annoying. Okay. Uh, so when we get back to the guild hall, Nefar is going to. Uh, I'm going to just say to Morthos, uh, I know you handle the talking very well. Uh, just give me my cut of the pay. I'm going to go make some potion. Morthos is going to look over at Nafara and be like, I got you. Um, where do you want me to come and find you when we get the pay? I will uh, probably just be out like towards the edge of town making a campfire and doing my own. Got it. Uh, so then I guess we approach um, the guild hall and we turn in the quest and I know that for Athenston um, is probably going to be the, the, the money hungry person they tend to be and is going to do that thing where they try to persuade for higher pay. Um, is that is that fair to assume for Athenston? Of course. I mean, why wouldn't I do, why wouldn't I do that? I mean, I mean you already... You're already getting like 50 platinum pieces each. We all know that's uh, not going to stop her off instant. But you see, <laughs> what if more? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What if more? I just want more. Is that so bad? Um, well then, roll <laughs> persuasion check. I will as soon as this, as soon as roll 20 stops locking me out randomly. <laughs> It senses the it senses the energy coming off of you and is like nah not not today fam. Um so My energy uh, is nothing but positivity. Do, <laughs> do does anything no, unexpected I happen? Out. <laughs> does anything right. unexpected happen while we make our way to the um when we make our way to Odolin and to um the the guild master? Uh, damn it. No. And, um, 
Raffinson, your your persuasion attempt is so bad that you personally get like twenty five platinum for pieces, and everyone else gets the fifty. Ah, uh-uh, no, no, I'm I'm gonna persuade again. I'm gonna roll persuasion on the persuasion. <laughs> You're gonna be- you're gonna want to bankrupt the town, and I'm just like, why? Because they don't need their money. I do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, uh, anyway, so I guess I see you guys, and I give a wave. <laughs> I I think to myself, oh goodness, I don't know how this con- is gonna go, but I don't say anything, and I just wave back um, oh. because there was a thing that happened in the last session. There was a thing. Yeah. Morpho's let your enslaver escape. That's not how it went down. You tried to execute a prisoner who had surrendered, and I, I wasn't tried cool to kill with that. the slaver, but Morpho's wouldn't let me kill the slaver. Hey, hold Anyhow, on, I'm gonna go hold over. On, hold, hold on, Kaylin. If you're going to do a persuasion check, you at least you at least have to give a persuasive argument to the person you're talking to. <laughs> hey, we went out there. We did a thing. And it was a rough thing. Morphos here almost died, and he even refused to let me kill a slaver, so cough up some more uh, money. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> oh. <laughs> um... I like saying that to, to Odolin instead of to the... <laughs> Just being like, hey, Odolin, give me money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wait, what? Stares at you both for a solid minute, and then turns and walks back towards the inn. I mean, oh, honestly, that's, that's fair. Right. Oh wait, I thought you were talking about the persuasion check for the other guy, not to Odolin. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was talking about. Oh, okay. Then uh, to Odolin, I just simply say, yeah, he allowed the uh, he allowed your uh, slaver to escape and. You might want to, uh, I'm not going to say execute Morphos, but just punish him. And then I walk over up to the end, and I go and I say, Hey, we got those trade routes freed. Where's my money? <laughs> um, still exactly what I just said I was going to do. <laughs> I mean, once again, fair. Honestly, I'm, I'm with you on that one, Odolin. <laughs> Um, okay, so once we've turned in the quest and we've leveled up... Um, um, unfortunately for Kaylin, her persuasion check, I actually have to roll a loop on the inside check on that. Um, <laughs> GMR, oh, 1D20, I'd say plus 2... I fucking failed that. <laughs> oh no. Well, this person immediately falls for her Athenston zero. No, prison. no, no. It's just an unrecognized command because I used the wrong thing. Like, it's not GMR, it's GR. I just forgot to do that. So. Um, I have good charisma. I, they, I got uh, 17, which means <laughs> that. Um, your persuasion attempt failed. My persuasion attempt to who, though? To whom? To the merchant that you're trying to persuade for more money. Oh, Y'all okay. Can't well, that... control Odolin. Odolin's well, a player character. Well, that's fine. Um, all right. Well, given that failure, I just <laughs> simply move on, ignore the merchant, and I go up and I sit and I tell the trade caravan, "All right, look, we uh, clear those paths. Where's the money you owe me?" Well, you're getting the you're getting the fifty platinum pieces, which From... by the way is like five hundred gold. If you understand what I mean, so that yeah. this is quite a lot of money. I know, but I want more. You're not getting more because you failed your persuasion attempt. While this is going on, I'm going to attempt to make four potions of healing out of some of my ingredients. Um, um, so, 
you want that okay. medicine check or that would be a herbalism check uh, I'll just use my herbalism kit yes your herbalism kit I think <clears throat> it takes a while to make I don't know how long does it take to, to, um, to make a potion of healing um with Let me the double new, check. with the new artificer uh class in in the Eberron setting it at least costs around fifty gold for, for the ingredients and other stuff as well. Also, old um Raffinsu, you need to give me a argument for that 22. You can't just let the 22 sit there. Ah. Uh, this is the market. So, hey, we worked really hard, and given that we worked hard and that we're the only one who brings actually any income in here, if it weren't for us, there'd be nothing around here. Uh, how about a little extra? Okay, well, uh, this time the merchant nods his head like you made a really good point, and then he uh, gives you 25% more platinum, uh, well, more money, which is 50 platinum, 12% be like 6 extra platinum. 25%. Yeah, oh, 25% would be like 12 extra platinum. So, Roughly. 62. Also, huge amount of noises coming from Horizon City. Sorry, yeah, I just, I had to uh, get something. Um, so yeah, now I'm a rich bitch. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, 12 extra platinum when you were getting 50. I don't know if that makes you rich, but okay. Um, I get the money for me and for Nefaria. I politely thank the the merchant who gave us the quest, and then I go over you, to where Nefaria for, is. You've all forgotten one single thing. Yes. You also get a magic item. Cool. Um, I take... Yeah, and by the way, Chrissy, you're right. There's a lot more that goes into the healing potions. I didn't realize. My bad. So I'll be right I back. probably won't be able to make one. I mean, we could always, Zal could always just homebrew it and be like, hey, making this potion is actually pretty easy, fam, but maybe there's like a point cost or something. Um, I get the, uh, uh, I'm not going to make a persuasion check for extra money because I don't think that's necessary and I don't want to bankrupt people. Um, so I just take the 50 for me, the 50 for Nefaria, and um, then I go meet up with Nefaria for a few moments, give Nefaria the 50. And, um, I guess, whatever magic item. Is it a magic item for each of us? That's the way that it is, right? It's like one per person. <clears throat> one uncommon magic item per person. Cool. Um, I take whatever magic item Nefaria is going to be given. I explain that Nefaria is not the most social sort, and that we had a rough experience. And then I go over to Nefaria and I give Nefaria the magic item she was going to get, as well as the 50 platinum that I have I'm keeping on me, and whatever uncommon item I get. And I take I mean, account okay. and probably does the same thing. I mean, part of me doesn't even... I mean, none of you guys told me what magic item you wanted. Oh, yeah. We can, <laughs> we can just retcon it so that we <laughs> had it when we were inside the dungeon. It's fine. You After the session. You were um, <laughs> inside the dungeon, though. No, no. What I'm saying, Zal, what I'm saying <laughs> is that, like, we can tell you after the session whatever item we were going to get so that way you have time to, like, write it up or whatever. And then when we're in the dungeon next session, um, or wherever we are next session, I don't know if we're going to try to one-shot this dungeon, which to me instinctually sounds like a terrible idea. I mean, um, it is. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have You're a not thing. Wrong. <laughs> I ha okay, look, I have a thing that could help us significantly with this dungeon. You can check my character sheet, because I think that's a thing that you can do as, like, the DM. If you check um, my yes. second 
third level spell slot. If you see what it is, you'll probably see what I'm talking about, but it's also in the chat. Um, um, Tiny Hut. It's a thing. It's incredibly um, useful. And yes. it's a ritual, which I didn't know. Nice. Um, <laughs> so what I'm saying is, I'm after scared. this session, we can message you what magic item I didn't know that you wanted us to pick. My bad. Um... <laughs> We can message you that, and then we can just retcon it so that we got the magic item now, and we just didn't use it while we were in the dungeon, or we just didn't use it this session. Um, okay, hold on one second. Thank you... Uh... Deg... Deg again, five, for the follow. I'm sorry if I murdered your name. I hope you have a good time. Crap, you got off. feedback. I hope you have a good time, and I'll. S I hope you enjoy chaotic roll. Thank so, so much. what's Nefaria doing? So that way, there's not just dead silence in in the middle of this live stream. Yeah, I mean, I. Well, I well, sorry, there I... well, there wasn't really dead silence because there was thank you to someone for following. So. Oh. Was that... Sorry. That's why I, I said hold know. on. That's why I said hold on. You've always done it, like, with us present, and I don't have the chat pulled up. I didn't know. Sorry. Oh, no, no, he's not cheating. Well, so robotic there. Uh, yes. Count. I said, well, now we yeah. know he's not cheating. Is that better? Ooh, no, nope. you're still robotic. My uh, my roll twenty crashed, so I'm trying to get that back up. Oh well, it looks like you're still in the game for me. But... Yeah, you're still in the you're still in Discord. You're just not in roll twenty apparently. Yeah, I still see you too. I don't know. Roll twenty is weird, y'all. We're we're it just is. doing our best. It is. Well, like yeah, the the tab that I was playing on, it just has it uh, just says connecting to server over and over. Oh okay. Yeah, mine no. did the same so, thing. So I'm booting I'm booting up a laptop so. It'll be a little bit. Righto. All right. Well, um, I'm going to s write up all the uncommon ones after the game, and then I'll just list them. I'll just make a liberal office list, and you guys can choose one after the game, I guess. Okay. Um. So, um. Uh... I take it for the sake of plot progression, you would like for us to see if there's another quest, or would you like for us to do like a rest right now, <clears throat> as opposed to just saying that we did one while we were at the ruin, which really wouldn't have made sense. Um, yeah, I guess we do the long rest now, and that, and then for then you guys get a quest or whatever. Oh, I no, miss our no, troll no. friends. Uh, well, they ran away or died, so... I hope they're okay. <laughs> they probably aren't, but... I mean... I, I share your sentiment. Okay. <laughs> 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 that was a beautiful social interaction right there. Very organic. Um, <laughs> okay. So, um, as we're getting ready to do, like, uh, a long rest... Morthos is um, going around with all this money in his pocket, and he feels very weird with it. Um, so he wants to invest it, but is there still only like one or two businesses? Because if there's only one or two, I've either invested in all of them or in half of them. Um, there is the um, weapon shop, armor shop, potion shop, magic item shop, and... Basically, hey, I... supply shop. What... Can I invest in the supply shop? Because I've already invested in the um in the magic. No, yes, in the magic item shop because it was where Elfie. It was where I spent all my money getting Elfie her boots and becoming a business person. Those weren't uh, those weren't boots. That was a cloak that gave her advantage on her stealth checks. I was thinking of Pathfinder for some reason. I was thinking of the boots of Elven kind. Instead of like the cloak of elvenness, which was what we got, Elfie. Yes. <laughs> I have big shiny weapon. So I think I have <laughs> enough money to found a colony. 
Uh, Actually, we might, now that I think about it. That's also a good idea. I should probably do that, too. Out of money to what now? Find a colony. Found a colony. I think I think in Colonial English it's is found, that? but doesn't sound right. So Morphos can be more violent. Uh, Tria <laughs> is advocating that Morphos should be more violent. No, Morthos doesn't want to be more violent. You know, Tria, you're right. I think Morphos should be more violent. In fact, that's why I think we should combine our funds together, so that way we can found some colony. Because colonialism, that's always a peaceful process. I like how I like how Zach comes back and immediately yeets. Yep. Sometimes <laughs> just got to dab on him. Um, okay, so. I, I feel like this would be a good time for some downtime, especially because apparently we've been doing this. We we all of our adventures have taken place over the course of like of one week, which is like insane to me. We started as level one, and now we're level five over the course of a week. That's amazing. Um, we're the yes. best adventurers in the world, guys. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I want to found a colony. Can't I have enough money? To, so where do I go to find this colony? That would take a long time, fam. <laughs> Yeah, also quite a lot of money. I, I don't remember where that is from. It might be strongholds and followers. I, I know Pathfinder, like, Pathfinder does a lot of things really, 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 really well. And, like, they have a lot more stuff than just being like, hey fam, here's monsters and you slam. Pathfinder has <laughs> rules for stuff like this. I think in D&D, it's probably just in Strongholds and Followers. Or the Dungeon Master's uh, Guide. Xanathar's Guide has some uh, some really? good stuff on downtime. Oh, wow. I've yeah, only read does. Xanathar's Guide like once, so I honestly didn't know that. <laughs> um, it has more stuff for the Dungeon Master's Tools in Chapter 2. It has character options for all the classes. It even adds like three different things for each of the main classes, like Warlocks, you get like, what is the patron attitude? What is the special terms of the contract, etc. I really um, like the ro one of the roguish archetypes that adds Mastermind. That one's pretty fun. Yeah, that one's pretty cool. I just yeah. want to participate in colonialism. Um, okay. Yeah. Before we discuss that, I'm just going to say that uh, Odalyn is out back beating the heck out of like a dummy that she's sort of put together for fighting. Uh, she's just whacking the hell out of it. I know what I'm going to do with some of my money. I'm going to give 25 of it to Odalyn. Um, also, what do we do with the 50 platinum that um, is, is Moloch's? That's that's the name of DC's character, right? I don't remember. Yeah, yes. um, it's Moloch. Okay. <laughs> um, do, do, do I can take it and then I can just give it to Moloch whenever Moloch is next in our campaign? Um. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um. I'll so, tag. I'll, I'll tag DC. So um, there's like you can buy a magic item as a downtime activity. You can go carousing. You can go making magic items, making potions, healing. It's in Xanathar's guide. So making a potion of healing, a, a simple one is like one day and 25 gold, greater one work week, it is five days, and a hundred gold, superior healing, three work weeks, a thousand, Supreme healing four work weeks ten thousand. You go okay. on you go on a crime spree, you go gambling, pit fighting is a thing, relaxation, religious services, research. What are we Oh, uh, how long is the downtime that you're we're gonna be taking then? Uh Downtime is described in the Dungeon Master's Guide and in uh, Xanathar's Guide to Everything as a work week or more, depending on the activity. Okay. 
you can go sell magic items, go work, go training, like say... I'm going to organize the founding of a new colony in the name of my god. If I wanted to start a general temple to like the, the super chill, super good D&D gods, ones like Shatana and Bahamut, whose name I can't pronounce because he has a silly fantasy name. Um, Bahamut. If I wanted to do that, how much would that cost? Um, making an abbey or yeah. a temple making... is 50,000 gold pieces and 400 days of work. That's more money than I have, and that's basically longer than my character has been alive. My character is actually like 23, but like, that's basic, that's longer than my character has been alive for narrative purposes. <laughs> okay, so if, if we are taking downtime, uh, then I'm definitely going to take, uh, if it's, if it's like a work week that we're doing, I'm going to use that downtime and 100 gold to create a greater potion of healing then out of that, for sure. Well, it will like, cost you one day to do that, so are you going to make multiple during that work uh, week? Yeah, well, no, the, the greater potion is the one work week uh, on that Xanathar's Guide. That's the one that's 100 GP, and uh, one work week. For uh, the time yes, it takes to the make. greater healing. That is correct. So that's that's what I would end up doing on that downtime for my character. Also, just general, like maybe not necessarily living in the township, but stopping by the township, just out on uh, doing ranger things. Okay, just saying. If you go out into any of the zones outside of the green little plains area. Where the township is, you're going to get an encounter. Ooh. Don't go wandering off by yourself. It's dangerous. <laughs> yes! I, think... <laughs> I mean, you're a ranger, and you're kind of a badass, so you'd probably be fine. But still, don't. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll be around people as <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> I guess uh, is Zal, is this the time you want us to talk about all the stuff we're doing before we go to bed? Because um, I'm just gonna be like, hey, Shatana, how's it going? And um, I just really like Shatana. She's just like a generic goddess of agriculture, life, and healing. And agriculture, life, and healing is the sort of stuff that I live for in D and D. So I guess she's my goddess now. I don't know how to do religion in D and D. Doesn't make sense to me. Uh, kind of like real life. It's a well, yeah, you're it's an atheist. A, it's a God's exist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically, kind of like real life. Ex so I know. You mean real life is what you're saying? Okay. <laughs> sure, fam. Um, yeah, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing generic religious stuff, and I'm just, like, chatting with Shatana and being like, hey, I hope you're having a good time. Um, if you're out there, and if you're interested in the mortal world, it'd be really cool if you, if you let us know that, like, you're chilling up there. And I know the D&D gods are real, D&D, &D, but I'm just like, if you want to help us out against Zariel, um, I'll do lots of farming, because you're cool and I like farming. Thanks, fam. Bless up. A dual religion check. I actually have a really good religion score, so I probably be talking about that a lot more seriously. Um, but here we go. Nice. Dirty 20. <laughs> Not a nat 20, but it's 20. <laughs> it's a dirty 20, y'all. <laughs> really um, um, I you feel like some, uh, uh, you feel like you're blessed, but but by the by the god you're you're trying to um have a friendly prayer session with and uh now you get like um an inspiration the bard gets inspiration y'all until wild. you use it <laughs> i I'm always the one doing the inspiring and now I'm feeling inspired this is amazing.
Um, and for a second, Morthos quietly considers, like, he's just like, I've been thinking about becoming a warlock this whole time. Should I just become a cleric instead? The answer to that question is probably yes, but I just want to Eldritch Blast some things. Um, Shrek's wisdom score, 13. Oh. <laughs> I mean, fair play. That's fair. That was mean, but fair. But yeah, that's what Morthos is up to. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, while he's doing this, Odolin is going to come over and, and sort of stare at him for a while. And then that's she's cool. going to sit down and look him in the eye. I have a feeling a conversation's coming up, so I'm just like, hey, what's up? Uh, how, how are you doing, uh, Odolin? I almost said Christy. Well, or if the woman that had taken me from my parents was dead. That person had surrendered, and our whole thing is being moral people who do the right thing. Moral. And look, I, <laughs> for a second, I can almost hear Harappenstein in the background, and I just glare into the sky. And I don't say anything, but I give this guy a look, and I'm just like, if someone wants to strike lightning on this person, I wouldn't say no. Um, moral. Moral. And then I look back Letting to Odlin. Letting is now moral. And I look back to Odlin, and I'm like, look, the problem is not this one person. The problem is that this person wants to bring about the apocalypse. We have to stop that from happening at all costs. And if it means taking down Zariel, I have no problem doing that. I hope it doesn't come to that, because if Zariel comes down, that's a bad sign. That means that we probably already shit the bed. But I am not going to apologize for doing the right thing. Our morals are not defined by moments that are easy for us. Our morals are defined by how hard we fight in moments when it'd be easy for us to do the wrong thing. And all violence helps Zariel. All of it. Nice every, blow, every blow punched. Every that was not right in English. Every punch thrown. Every eldritch blast cast. All of it helps bring her back. If we end violence early, then we make it easier to stop her in the long run. Odolin gets up and walks away. I look, I look at her, she walks away, and I think to myself, I'm sorry that it went down that way, but I'm not Shouldn't going to be apologize for check? doing the right thing. This wasn't, we weren't trying to persuade each other of anything. At least, I don't think that's how it was going down. I think that we were having, like, a conversation. Yeah, um, she was uh, going, she was there to uh, see what his, um, she was there to see what his uh, rationale was. For what it's worth, okay, Morthos really did want to kill uh, Zahundra. Yes. Yes. Right, Zal? He should have killed them. That's a her. I, I, Morthos really wanted to kill Hewn. I'm just going to say her last name. It's a lot easier for me to say. Hewn is good. Yeah. Um, so. I, I'm not trying to disrespect this evil warlock lady. I just can't pronounce her first name, and I feel like disrespecting her more if I continue to butcher her first name. Especially because she, she was not an asshole, but going she surrendered. Good. Uh, she's not going to be good for a while, but honestly, I'm not sure she would have been good if you had killed her either. It's just one of those things that she's not going to be good. I really, uh, Morthos really, 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 really wanted to kill this person. It was a challenge. But as I slash Morthos said, we are defined more by the difficult decisions that we make, including sticking to our principles. Than like trying to prevent me from killing, like trying to prevent me from doing said killing. Yes. And you went and you did it anyway. And honestly, I slash Morthos haven't made a big deal about it. But Morthos is angry at Harappenstein and Nefaria because 
that's not an okay thing to do, y'all. If someone surrendered, you don't execute them. That's that's Unless not okay. They hadn't surrendered. They were unrepentant monsters who were going to continue to do violence. And in all oh, honesty, okay. that person, Hoon, is also an unrepentant monster who's going to continue to do violence. But that doesn't mean that we can just execute them. That's not how it works. Right. We, no, instead we just let them go and commit more murders for Zariel. They were kicked out of the cult. The cult were some of the people who were trying to kill them. Uh-huh. And now she can go and find a new cult. Look, if we see her again, and we probably You'll let me will. execute her. If we see her again, and she tries to fight us, and she doesn't surrender, I will happily be one of the people who is there executing her with y'all. But if she surrenders, I'm not going to attack. At least not first. Well, that's fine. You don't have to attack. I'll do the attacking. I'm more than happy to do that. Also, in all honesty, you were not the person who should have been making that call. Not you or Nefaria. It should have been Odolin. That would have been one of those moments that's just, like, poetic justice. It would have been awesome. And that would have been a lot harder to be like, hey, don't do that. But since it's just you who wanted to do that, <laughs> it's oh, a lot easier to be God. like, hey, no, bad. Stop that. No murder. Any, anyhow, my character is uh, building a temple to Zarya. I mean, uh, is drawing up plans for co colonization of the grasslands. Yeah. That's what my character is doing. Hello there, bank guy. Welcome to the table, and I hope you enjoy the stream. Uh, I'm going to add a couple things to what mine's doing. I'm going to buy some cooking utensils. I already looked up the cost and I've calculated that out and purchase uh, some extra daggers. Oh, um, I'm going to say one extra thing. Um, as Odolin's leaving, I, like, while we were having the fight, or while we were having our discussion, not a fight, while we were discussing what was going on, um, I handed Odolin the 25 platinum piece. Yeah. I already said that in our Discord thing, but just so it's clear that it happened, like, on screen, there. And uh, I'm ready to do sleep sleep. <laughs> Alright, let's go to sleep. Just use adjectives. You're doing fine. You're Don't a great DM, it. and we appreciate yeah. it. You're doing fine. Just use your adjectives. All right. Okay. I see. Um. Hune. 
Do I see what caused his eyes to glow? Um. I have forgotten that I had accidentally muted my mic on the um, on the OBS, so I will reiterate. So basically, everyone goes to sleep. I reiterate this. So basically, I repeat myself because I'm an idiot. Anyway, I uh, you <coughs> your dad's playing. The, the lutes that he has made from oceanic stuff. No bank, everyone is going to sleep because they went on their long rest. And, and then, um, you see your dad's eyes glow and roll a history check. I thought I did set the Dungeons and Dragons category. Anyway, uh... So, so you... So with that, uh, history check, you remember... something odd about those eyes. They're very magical. And they remind you of a spell that a lot of the cult have been, have been using. You remember the glibness spell. And that you, your, and your dad says something very interesting. But after using the spell, honey, I'm going to give you... I'm going to let you stay with your Auntie Hume for a while. She's going to train you up to be a ch champion. Um. And you're going to make d d Daddy proud. Because there's an object underground. That'll make us a god. Hmm. Oh, I've had this dream before. Um, go another history check. Good at history. <laughs> uh, you, you, you're not. You don't remember if you've had that dream before. You, but you remember that you've had echoes of the same dream. I have a sense of where this was. <clears throat> um. Ah, <clears throat> uh, so. You, you, you directly remember without a check that, um, this was on the beach of your, of your family home. Right outside the Triton domain. This was also before you were kidnapped by Verhundra's Hume. But now you realize within your dream that you were that that you were not kidnapped, you were given. Oh, I get up. I um go into Morthos's room and 
and um, up without uh, pretty much just by pushing him out of bed. Okay, I'm up now, I guess. I wasn't sure where that was going. Um, cool. Gotta go underground. All right. Um, Morthos looks over at her, and um, he he accepts this readily because he knows that this is the general direction where everything has been going. I'm gonna try to talk about Morthos, even though he's a separate person and not just a self insert, um, which is challenging for me because he is basically a self insert. Um, and he he looks over at her, accepting this. Okay, I understand. Um, we have reasons for wanting to go. We've all had reasons for wanting to go. Do you mind sharing why specifically you want to go? Because I feel like it's a separate thing from the other reasons we have. There's something down there, something powerful. But we can't let them have it. On the same page, I'm ready. Um, I, I agree with you. I, uh, this is Morthos talking, for clarity's sake. Um, he, he looks over at her, he nods, he agrees, and he's like, I fully agree with you, I'm fully on board. Um, and then he looks over at her and is like, are you gonna tell everyone this? Or is this a one-on-one -on -one thing? I suppose we have to bring the annoying sorcerer. As well. Would you like for us to involve the, the ranger, too? Because if we're doing this on a one-by-one -one case, I know the, the ranger has her own reasons for wanting to go. They're more or less the same reasons as yours, but there's a different backstory there. It's fine. I trust you. If you say she's all right, she's all right. He looks over at her. Get your he shit. Nods. Sorry. Oh, we're doing this right now? Um, okay. Yeah. Uh... Zell, is this, are we waking up mid-rest? Um, I mean, you or, guys can take the all... full rest. Okay, cool. I was confused, and now when Chrissy started talking again, I realized that maybe she and I were under different impressions, and that maybe, uh, did you think, Chrissy, did you think that we, that we had all just woken up from our rest? I, I was thinking it was very, like, early in the morning, and this is after i had had a night's sleep so sorry i thought that you like had a nightmare and that you woke up like abruptly from that um i'm fine with it either way uh, I'll, I'll do some role playing to help out i agree with either course of action um so Zal, which was it <laughs> huh well, are, is this the end of our rest um I, I i guess it would be the end of the rest <laughs> okay cool um, so then now Odile, um, Morthos is on board, um, and then he looks over Odile and is like, uh, do you want to talk to the sorcerer, or do you want to talk to the ranger? I'm such a nice person, who would not want to talk to me? Let me talk to- So we can get everyone up and ready to go ASAP, so that we can, like, go with the urgency that this demands. Let's, uh, let me talk to the ranger, I never met her before. Cool. Might as well say hi. That's fair. Um, just so you know, I'm not gonna tell you her backstory. Um, that's that's her story to tell. But um, she's basic. She basically has the same general goal as you. She wants us to go into the cave. She wants us to fight. Um, she's worried that I'm not gonna kill things. Which I mean, fair. Um, I would if I needed to. But like after the last couple of fights, I get it. Very candid. Morthos is very candid. Um, and then Morthos goes to wake up her Athenson. Also, Nefaria, where are you sleeping? Again, I on the edge of town by a campfire. So very, very not people. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that Morthos gave me the heads up as to about where you're. Yeah. Uh, camp. Yeah, I'd imagine Morthos would relay that to you. As Morthos is leaving, you hear him shout, Hey, uh, Nefaria really, really doesn't like people, and she's probably on the outskirts of town. She's probably still in town, because otherwise she'd be facing monsters. But 
she's probably far away, just so you know. Yeah. And I guess Morthos comes to me and I say, what's yep. up? Uh, Morthos looks make... over at you. <laughs> I'm making Morth plans to colonize, what's up? Uh, you're gonna have to put your imperialism on hold. Um, we gotta go spelunking. Imperialism never goes on hold. What, what is it you want? Uh, we gotta go spelunking. There, um, as you know, cause Nefaria- wait. Uh, Zach, did Nefaria tell everyone about the rock thing? The-, the Uh, no, actually. No? Okay. Uh, cool. that was- that was a conversation in Elvish, so. Oh, the Twitch okay, baby. so this really was just me. Uh, I'm gonna look over at the and be like, hey, um, there's some bad people in a cave. It's not a, a dungeon as in a cave. But, um, there's some- there's some bad people underground. We're gonna stop them. Um, Odalyn's on her way to wake up and meet Nefaria. Um, get ready. You gotta- you're gonna have to put the colonialism on hold, my friend. I'm sorry. There's no time what, to be imperialist. What bad thing are these people doing that makes them so unique? Because we've been into a cave before, and that didn't end up too well for us, now did it? What cave are you talking about, Sam? We never got into the ruins before. Oh, I thought it was a cave. Uh, no, we we were out of first killed. Yeah, that was in front of the cave. Yeah, that was in front of the cave. That wasn't in the Poon is gone. Um so we're probably gonna have to face different drow. Not her. Okay, and what is our goal in this um expedition? What are we trying to do? There is an artifact that her and her homies really wanted to get their mitts on, and if they did it would have caused the apocalypse. And not potentially not just the the devilish apocalypse, not just like Zariel coming out, but like all patrons, and patrons include some really bad people. Um, Zao, can I do an Arcana or Religion check to um n see if I know about patrons beyond devils? <laughs> um, first I have to say thank you, Walker Trips, for the ninth gotta, month of patrons. Of, subscri of subscribing. Thank you very much. And, would that um, be Arcana, or would that be religion? Because aren't patrons things that people worship? So um, are, some of them um, are gods, are, others okay. are not. So, like, there are cults to Archfays, but there's not really cults to Liches. There are in Pathfinder, there are not in D&D. &D, okay, that's fair. Homebrew, unless someone homebrews one, which is fair. But... In D and D, there's not canon cults to liches aside from Draco liches. That's that's a whole other thing. D &D I mean, in D, I mean, in D and D, a lich yeah. is an art okay, patron. Okay, so, so what you're that... saying is that we need to go down there to stop this from happening. Yes. Um, uh, you could either roll okay, uh, so history or kana. So that means we can colonize the Underdark if we get rid of them. Please that stop sounds... this talk of colonialism. Uh, the Underdark is... The, the Underdark is, I'm like, miles down. Huh? You're doing the right thing for the wrong reason, and I don't, huh? the, the... The wrong reason, and I don't like it. I, I mean, what's wrong with a little colonialism of the Drow? The Drow I wish have you no... do the right thing for the right the reason. The Drow have um... an inferior culture to ours. Okay, so that's that's three people on our team on board. All that's left is for Odlin to talk to Navaria. Um, cool. And I believe. Uh, when are we setting out? And, and I did path. say Arcana uh, or history. Every, I assume as soon as everyone. And as soon as we stop um, by the guild hall. Okay. Um, I realized I was mute this entire time, so, um, I'm an idiot as always. So Arcana or history, whichever works. Whichever's um, okay. higher. Uh, I'm gonna do. Jesus, they're both equally high. Um, cool. Um, can I can I talk very briefly about patrons just for two seconds? Do it. Okay. Um, I look over at um, I look over at Harafinson and I'm just like, okay, so there's this thing called the Patron's Eye. It's a really bad rock that contains the energy of patrons. Um, what that means, you're a sorcerer. You probably know some of this, but patrons are usually bad things that give often bad people, sometimes good people, lots of magical power if the evil cult people find it and they either break it or use it in a ritual to unleash the patrons locked within, 
um, we could find ourselves fighting great old ones, which are a lot more dangerous than Desario. It is a literal apocalypse if whatever ritual these people want to do, they manage so to do. So basically, basically summoning world. Cthulhu. Yes, um, that's really bad. That's if you don't know why, I don't have time to explain it, and I'm not just talking to Callan. I'm talking to anyone who is just like in the chat. Cthulhu bad. <laughs> Not good. I thought Cthulhu was the good guy. Yeah, I thought, yeah, Cthulhu was in a game and he saves the world. So, there are people I'm... who say that Cthulhu is one of the good guys. He's probably, like, neutral at best. Either way, still not a thing we want to unleash on the world. If we can stop Cthulhu being unleashed. I thought Cthulhu would bring his blessing. No. Like, because he, he saved the world Damn in that video game, didn't he? So... Damn it, y'all. Um, well, he did, but then he destroyed the world by making it more insane after he got his powers back, so... Yeah, that's just a side effect. Look, there's a big, <laughs> bad, evil thing called Dendar the Night Serpent. I oh, Dendar? Like I want to bring Dendar. Oh my god, Arcana, it's a snake! I can talk about this. Dendar is not good. Dendar's a snake, therefore Dendar, Dendar has to be good. Dendar eats dreams and would eat the moon. None of that is good. That's all. Well, the snakes snakes get hungry, you know. They need to eat. I really picked the wrong person to have this conversation with. Uh, Chrissy, <laughs> Very much so. Yes. I hope your conversation with Nefaria goes better. Than you, but you're both neutral slash good. So I it probably will. I want to summon this snake. He needs to eat. He sounds hungry. I need to feed the snake. Let the other people talk. Yes. So I go to the uh, outskirts of town. Do I see? You'll probably see like a plume of smoke because the campfire is going. It's like a weak plume of smoke, but there, there's some smoke that you'll be able to locate pretty easily. All right. So I just walk up to the camp kind of slowly, but uh, in a non threatening fashion. Okay. And as far as just going to shoot you a glance. And then uh, pull out a bowl, and, and like over the campfire is like a cooking pot with some food in it. Navarra is gonna pour some food into the bowl and gesture it to you. Well, come and sit down. Take the bowl. Say thanks. I'm a friend of Morthos. I've seen you talking with him. He's a nice man. Yeah, he's all right. Um, I heard what brings you here? There's a thing we've got to do, so... So, we're finally making a move? Yeah. Are you ready? More than ready. I'll pack up my camp. Alright. The others will be along. Alright. Uh, so, Harathenston and I walk- or, Jesus, I'm not- I'm not gonna, like, try to control Harathenston. I walk over to the guild hall, and, <laughs> um... <laughs> I, pre I appreciate I am Odalyn and Nefaria's relationship so much. It went exactly as I expected it would. Um, <laughs> great. Um, I walk over to the guild hall because I have a sort of just, um, we'll say that I didn't see the enter the dungeon thing glaring on the screen. And I'm just like, I have a <laughs> feeling I should go over to the guild hall and make sure. See enter if the dungeon? Anything. Yes, enter the gungeon. We're gonna fight a giant bullet at the end. <laughs> oh, and this will spoilers. Free the, um, just so long as it brings the no. uh, snake. Uh, so when I go over to the guild hall, um, I walk in and I walk over to the master slash barkeep, and I'm just like, "Hey, um, we're going into a dungeon. I don't know if you know anything about a nearby dungeon, but there's one in the mountains. We're gonna explore it. We're gonna scout it. Do you have any quests related to that?" <clears throat> um, yes, he says that, oh, you're talking about that odd dungeon that is rumored to have been here since before we came and is even older than the giants. If you want a safer path, there's, a, he, he opens up a map and goes, there's an entrance around here in the forested hills that you can go to, and it's much closer than the one in the mountains. And he shows you the 
quest to uh, to I heard reports of a, of the patron Zai from some of the uh, people here and uh, for your information my dear bard the, all the f- all the fight clubs all of them are empty it looks like they're on the move oh no that means that this is going to be a very diverse dungeon which is talk a lot but also there's going to be a lot of enemies Great. we need to go and free dindar um, i i look over at the guild master and i'm just like look i i level with the guild master for a second i'm like okay um, first of all, Harafinson, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Do you want to ask about the reward? I'm about to. I just didn't know if you were with me. Do you, do you want to do that? Yeah, a reward. Okay. Do you, even ha- you don't even have to ask me if I want a reward. I mean... No, I'm asking if you want to be the social person. And oh, you I'll be, be the like, social person, Okay, yeah. go for it, fam. Alright, so look, this dungeon, it's rather large. And so... I want to know what the reward's going to be, and please don't lowball it, because there will be consequences. <clears throat> well, considering you'll be fighting the cult members, which are more than likely going to be champion fighters, barbarian, berserker barbarians. And quite a lot of other more ferocious people. I'm going to reward the group a a thousand gold if if you can deal with the cultists and an additional 500 to destroy or prevent the patron's eye from being used. Do you accept this adventures? I look over at Morphos and I'm like, really? Just at 1k gold? Like, uh, mate, okay, how about at least 5k gold for our service here? Y'all, we're the only people who bring money to the place. Huh? Look, I know that, like, D&D's economy doesn't make sense, but in fairness yeah. to this poor guild hall, we are apparently the only adventurers here, aside from our friends who probably still exist and are just, like, out doing miscellaneous things. I know in the past we've discussed having them on as hirelings. We've never really had a chance to, like, clarify that. Um, but in fairness to these people, we do... Apparently, all the work that is going on. So I say we just accept. I say we just accept this on virtue of it being the right thing to do. I get the potions, and then we go over to the dungeon. And uh, no, 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 no. That's not how this works. Since we're the ones doing all the work, we need at least five times the payment. I, I think it sounds like uh, Harathenstein and uh, Morthos should have a persuasive off against each other. <laughs> I kind of want Harappinson to win this, because, like, Morthos tries to do the right thing all the time, but, like, on the lowest of keys, this is one of the rare moments where Harappinson kind of has a point. (laughs) (laughs) Harappinson is often correct, and (laughs) I'm I'm, I'm, I'm intending for that to be as me as be. Um, like, but Harappinson is right now. We're basically saving the world, I feel like more than 1k gold. Okay, just 1k um, gold to save Tria wants you to, to, to fight, so yeah, do a persuasive one. Okay, um, you. so, okay, quick question, for clarity's sake. Are we persuading each other, are we persuading the DM? <laughs> Not the DM. Are we persuading each other, uh, the guild master, or both each other and the guild master? Uh, persuade each other first, and then whoever wins, they... Like if Harafinson wins, well, they get to go say kill monster. Okay, um, her, okay, Harafinson, uh, pick a number between one and two. Between one and two? I'm gonna yeah. pick a half. 
but Actually, one and one half. Pick, pick two numbers between. Ah, Jesus, what's the lowest dice? I don't. Um, know the lowest is, is a one d four. Uh, pick two numbers between one and four. We're gonna we're gonna take turns doing this, and I want Zal to roll the dice. Two. Okay. Wait. Do you pick one and two, or just two? You're supposed to two pick and two three. numbers. Two and three. All right, Zal, can you roll the dice? Oh, I guess I go first. Um. Okay, I look over at, I look over at Haraf and Stone, and I'm just like, look, we are doing something that may in effect be saving the world, because as I mentioned to you earlier, what we're trying to find is an orb that contains the energy of all patrons, at least some of the energy. Theoretically, if our enemies manage to get this orb and they use it in a ritual, they can not just summon Zario. They can summon any patron, which is very scary because most patrons are more dangerous than Zario. Most great old ones are a lot more dangerous than Zario. And also, Zario, for all of her evilness, doesn't really want an apocalypse. She just wants a bunch of war. But if it's someone like a great old one who gets summoned, that's a monster that wants an apocalypse. I say right. we take the quest, and we go, and then I'm well, gonna no. make my persuasion, uh, because I don't want to, I don't want this to take forever. All right, Raffinson, you're probably gonna win, so just go ahead, do it, fam. Um, that'll roll the persuasion. <laughs> I rolled a seven. So um, gonna... well, well, frankly, it wouldn't be a persuasion; it would be an insight check. So, Wait, oh, it would be an insight. Okay, I'll reroll. That's not better. Well, well, no, 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 because the verses. Against the persuasion, it would be an insight. But we're trying to persuade each other. Well. You're such a cute little snake that you are. Well, I, well then, before Harappinson rolls, they should make the argument against, and they'll just keep the first persuasion. So. Alright. Uh, look at Morpheus say, yeah, of course. That's why I'm asking for more money. I mean, come on now. We're the only ones that have been doing this. We have equipment to buy, we have expenses, and this stuff doesn't pay for itself. The world pay doesn't pay for itself, so therefore, we should get more money. Morthos, Morthos looks slightly annoyed, but more or less convinced, and just gestures towards the guildmaster, and is like, Alright, the floor is yours, my friend. You, you, you got me this time. Hey, uh, and then I turn to Morthos to say, hey, give me a little bardic inspiration. I'm not gonna do that for you. <laughs> I have three bardic inspiration. We're about to no, go to You have dungeon. an extra one, don't shoot that. You no, that is not how it works for bardic. Bardic inspirations aren't like spell slots. I don't have you three... want the extra gold? <laughs> Look, you got an 18 on your persuasion. I think that you can handle this, fam. You think, but. <laughs> I mean, Ugh. look, I know that you've been known to fail, but just try it. We believe in you. Alright, well, you can at least aid me, right? Yeah, I can aid you. I'll give you, uh, hey, Zal, can I give Harathenson advantage? I'm for, wait. Oh, I'm actually not proficient in persuasion. I didn't even know that. Huh. Maybe I need to switch to intimidation. <laughs> no! <laughs> I will not give you aid if you do that. Um, <laughs> I'm a night nice sorcerer. <laughs> I mean that's that's a house rule. It's not it's not like a canon thing. Exactly. I okay, I, I agree with you, but in fairness I am going to point out that according to these two roles, Harathenson's modifier for persuasion is three and mine is four. So I feel like I feel like what you're saying makes sense. Which it is. 
Yeah, but neither is she. <laughs> Okay, Harappinson, do a thing. I'm sorry I can't aid you. <laughs> uh, how about some botic inspiration? No. I only have three of those. I'm not going to waste can, one of them. We can always just do a long rest afterwards. It's not like the world's going to end tomorrow. <laughs> don't tell Don't tell her that. <laughs> exactly. You only need a short botic inspiration. Don't, like don't encourage this. <laughs> God damn it, Zal. <laughs> Zal, why are you doing this? Um, oh, Jesus. Okay, Harafinson. Uh, um, Jesus, what is my, what is my, like, insight thing? Um, yes, I was used Try to persuade me to give you a bardic inspiration. Why do I have to persuade you? You should give it to me. I already wanted Because I say so, and because I don't want to help you with... Okay, let me see. Um, what is at this point, uh, Odolin would get pissed and go in and try to find out where the hell they are. Uh, we're like, just fun, we're and, finding uh, the trip. to the guild hall and sees them uh, arguing with each other. She's just going to go, hey, here, all right, let's go. All right. Um, okay, well, um, how much more money do you want? Um... Because I rolled a seven in my insight. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even need the inspiration. All right, cool. So I want, and then I turn to Morthos. I said, "Does five K sound good, or should I make yeah. it 10? Uh Since since Morthos is now like has, um, Morthos just like looks over, or yeah, Morthos just looks over. Raffinson is like, five is good." But you know, always, always aim higher, and then you can negotiate lower to what you really want. Save I 10. want ten k. I want ten k for saving the world. Uh, we don't have ten k because, as you realize, as you are the only adventurers here, we and we don't get a lot of business from you. You get a lot of business from me. Um. Yeah, but you're only like one person. Look, I'm doing my best to help support the local economy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I like how Morphos is the one who's been offended here. <laughs> okay, it's okay, okay. Um how much do you have, Morphos? How much do you can have? Can you can you do five? Can you do five K? Uh without bankrupting the entire colony here, I would say that we can spare at Least four thousand gold. I look over at Raffinson. Like, let's just take it. I want four k gold, but I also want uh, I want better armor and I want better weapon for each of us. So sorcerers can't use armor or weapons. No, but the uh, bard and the. Uh, Barbarian and the others can. And I can always use a nice new stat. Um we could I can give give everyone a plus one armor and weapon of their choice. We'll take it, I say, interrupting this so that we can move the story along. <laughs> Damn it, one of us. I was about to negotiate and say that he should do it to all weapons, regardless. You've done you've done enough negotiating, fam. Let's go get breakfast and then on our way to this dungeon. We're gonna Fine. get this back. Uh, we we walk over to Odolin. Um, I go grab a really quick breakfast. I just eat some rations on the road, and I'm just like, all right, guys, are we all ready to go? Save the world, probably. Hopefully, not die. We'll need some uh, potions. Yeah, we what's don't have any. what? What's our current inventory tally on potions? I have potions. I have two potions, but if we want to get more, and Zal, they should be on the house. More, um, I mean, you're not wrong, but um, <laughs> <laughs> if we want to get more, that's always a good. There's never anything bad about having more potions. I, I have, you, you know, I personally thought you guys would have went with a work week. 
to like make potions. But uh Is that an option? That was an option. In fact Miss Arya and I were talking about it earlier in the game. Yeah, uh underneath that though, I I one work week was enough for me to make a greater potion of healing. Uh, could I could I make other potions during that time frame too? Like, it, w- <clears throat> would I be just limited to the one? You'd only be limited to the one. Okay. So then, yeah, that's what I've got. I've got a greater potion of healing and three uh, regular potions of healing that Morthos has given me throughout our adventures. So I've got a tally of four. So I'll buy potions. Um, I don't know how much potions cost. But I'll buy potions. I'll also bring this up out of character, obviously, and say it doesn't make sense to roll for potions unless there's, like, a ho- a home rule where, like, potions can be made but are, like, of shoddy quality. If potions have, like, a set price, you should automatically assume that potions do either, like, the lowest amount of healing or the highest amount of healing. But that's not the way it works in D&D. Because the rules, as written, are kind of dumb. Then again, the economy in D and D doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah, I I fully agree with you because like it doesn't work is... by supply and demand. Oh, it doesn't work by like any sense of the word. There is no there is no like reasonable value for like a gold coin, and what a gold coin is worth really differs from place to place which almost makes sense until you realize just how radically different it can be from place to place. And also the fact that like one should be able to earn gold coins, including adventures, unless they work for like several years based off of the value of things, but adventures and towns just have like gold coins up the ass. I have over a hundred gold coins right now that are just gold, not platinum. Wow. And I'm level yeah. Uh, uh, additionally, me and Zal uh, talked about doing like a little bit of like homebrew uh, healing meals. So for like some of my ingredients that I've gathered, I I can make potentially depending on how well my rolls are uh, for healing. So nice. I also have Song of Rest, which I've never used because the way we do rests historically in this campaign has been like, all right, um, we don't really believe in short rests. Um, that might change. I have a feeling that's going to change this session. Um, also, I have Tiny Hut now, which does a very useful thing for long rests. Basically, we can long rest with a certain level of safety in the dungeon, which we were not able to do before. Long, like, Tiny Hut is basically the, like, um, generic brand version of that spell with a really long name that conjures a giant mansion except for the spell with a really long name also comes with food and tiny hut doesn't come with food i also have alarm spell so we can set yeah. up set basically up, uh, little nice can, defensive parameters yeah so uh yeah um how many potions anybody have? does anybody else have potions I'm pretty sure I have potions. Zal, how many potions can I buy if I use a hundred no, gold? More potions. Um, depending oh, like on you your have? persuasion roll. Let's go for it. Uh, um, that's not good. Buying potions, they should just give them to you because we're going to go save the world. I actually have to go. Um, I'm going to look have up. We? Potion prices right now. Have we ever... Okay. Has anyone in this campaign actually remembered using... Um, using I don't know, because a lot of you people just use spells to heal. We just use the bard and occasionally the sorcerer to heal. Uh, I do also have the spell cure wounds. That's true. Quick question. I don't know what level it is, but do you have good berry? And it's ridiculous overpoweredness. No, I do not. Oh, okay. Um, healing a healing pot is around fifty gold. Greater potion is two hundred to two hundred fifty. Superior is two thousand to two. <laughs> How does that make any sense? Twenty five hundred at 
and Supremes are 20,000 or 25,000. Medieval economies don't make any sense, y'all. Um, okay, I'm gonna use 100 gold to buy two. Um, I don't get a discount because my roll was really shitty. Um, and then I come up behind Morphos and I say, Morphos, they should be giving us superior potions for free since we're about to save everyone. Look, you aren't wrong, but this isn't the time for that. And, we... and I and, have and you, this. We should probably go adventure. And it's already wasted like an hour and a half in the game. I just argue. said that. <laughs> <laughs> It's not my fault people won't give us free stuff to save their world. Let's go save the world, guys. <laughs> um, okay, as we're as we're leaving, so that way we can advance the plot along. Um, how many potions does everyone have? I just got two new ones. I need to make sure I don't need to give anyone one. I think uh, I have three. You have three? I have four, counting my greater potion of healing. Jesus Christ. Um I have two. Okay, cool. Basic. Yeah, I have two basic ones, too. All right, Where cool. are you going, Snake? We're all good. All right, let's go save Dindar. No. Oh, <laughs> uh, Odalyn, I'm giving you one of my lower-level potions. I, I have a bias need. against Snake. I have Thank a you. Bias so, go ahead and add one to your inventory. All right, okay, cool. And I'm going to be a good DM and say that because the dungeon is going to be dangerous, you roll, you, you don't roll, you just get the maximum amount of healing for, okay. for the potion. Nope. Because I'm being oh, nice for once. Of course, you still have to roll for like the healing spells, but that's about it. All right. I need so, to apply some economic theory to D and D. Get these prices right. It, it doesn't make any sense because a the magic system is like uncommonly overpowered, and for the most part, there used to be an empire within the fair U fair room universe, and that collapsed after they had a war against magic eating. Things. I like the implication that in all of Faerun's history, one empire, single one. It was the empire. It was the Netherese empire. I know. <laughs> I I'm aware. <laughs> and they had tenth and higher level spells. They had so in three point five, gods can cast spells up to level twenty five, and I just I want anyone who is skilled. <laughs> in D&D to think about the implications of a 25th level fireball. Mm -hmm. That sounds like um, something I would cast. It is but something you, you would cast. You can't because you're not a god and because 5e doesn't hey. find rules for gods. Um, but in 3.5, that was a thing gods could do, and it was ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, also, gods can have like unlimited spell casting DC so no one ever could dodge a god fireball. <laughs> Oof. That's yeah. Oof. I'm gonna have to BRB for like two seconds. So don't die while I'm gone. Okay. So all right, let's kill Morphos. No. Um so you all has the most terrible luck ever going towards the dungeon. Oh, lovely. This is going to be fun. I love this. Hooray, I get to do a thing. This will be the best of Whatever fun. it is, I cast Fireball. Um, you can't cast Fireball because it's not your turn. And also, whatever. I got a new toy, I want to play with it. No. I mean, you could, but remember, you have careful stuff. Then again, I don't trust you with careful stuff, because I doubt you need the music. I'm still new to it. 
I mean, you almost never use your meta magic anyways. Right. I think. Are you so having are a we time? having an encounter based um, off of our horrible luck? Yes. Ritual casting languages is beautiful, and I always do it. All right. Oh, who, I'm who back. Do we... <laughs> So, um, you come across six hobgoblin captains. Cool, we're friends with them. I'm gonna make them our friends. I'm ready. Let's do this. Also, I mean, be common. I mean, yes. And also, I need to actually. Um, I cast fireball. <laughs> No. Um, I'm going to. I mean, if you want to have a war with the hobgoblins in the western forest, and also, um, (laughs) also set fire to where you are and possibly. Die from a forest fire. I hope you know that that is exactly what Harappinson wants. <laughs> hey, um, yeah. that sounds that sounds like Especially heaven. If they had seen Marthos. <laughs> <laughs> also, apparently, while I was gone, Zal was singing of our deaths. So that's not encouraging. Um. Okay, so we come across the six captains. Uh, how how are they looking towards us? Are they looking hostile, or do they just sort of acknowledge our presence? Uh, they just acknowledge your presence, considering, uh, like, several days ago, essentially, you guys had met a hobgoblin and a bunch of goblins before. And made friends with them, and also they're from the the mountains where you guys had to help to them with their necromancer problem. And they say, hello, friends, you're the guys who dealt with that necromancer. Friends. I, I love friends. I also, this it. happened three days ago because we don't believe in downtime campaign, so... Exactly. So, how has the patrolling been? Have you have the roads been uh, safe as of late? Aye, they've been as safe as ever, giant friend. Um, if you want to know the the entrance to the dungeon where you're heading, is um, is cr- crawling with cultist activity, but it's been quiet for the last few days. Do you think you could give us a favor here and invade? Please, no. Invade the cultist for us? Fine. So just... <laughs> fine. Um, Morphos is actually fine with that plan. That would require a persuasion check, because there's six people, there's six hub problems versus potentially hundreds of cultists. So... Yeah, it's better than just five adventures versus hundreds of cultists, but yes. <laughs> I mean, if they join no, us, it'd I'm be talking... 11 people versus hundreds of cults. I'm talking yeah, about exactly. the Fire Goblin tribe invading the uh, dungeon to help us out here, because we're not going to be able to take on hundreds. I mean, you could take on hundreds if they... If lots of the minions die while exploring the dungeon, you don't know that. <laughs> yeah, it's not like they had defended control over the dungeon. Damn it. So. Um, well, that's not going to work, is it? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, so, um, e- even I as a DC to... check, that fits. I uh, talk to um, Morphos and I say, hey, um, may- maybe you could talk better to these guys than I can. I look over at her up and I just, like, nod politely. Dang it, I'm talking as if, uh, as if I am Morthos. I keep being <laughs> I am Morthos. <laughs> This is a, and all, just, this is a self-insert character, so screw it, I'm Morthos. Um, <laughs> the secret, that's the plot twist that Zal has been teasing us about. I was Morthos the whole time. Um, <laughs> I, look, I look over at the Hobgoblins and I'm just like, alright guys. Um, my friend here is communicating his ideas a little bit badly. 
what he's saying is that these enemies pose a risk to all of us. They endanger every single person here and beyond. I know that y'all invading yourselves is a silly idea. It's, it's, it's a bad idea. I agree with you. If it's just the six of y'all, even if it's just the 11 of us, we might be able to get a little bit farther than any of us could by ourselves, but we still wouldn't be able to make it far, assuming this dungeon hasn't just been eating up cultists. And we shouldn't assume that because that would be a really weird and really convenient thing that historically has not been the case. Um, but if we all work together, if y'all head back to your tribe and come back and help all of us, all of our friends and us together, we might be able to do something about this place. And I'm going to roll a persuasion. That's not very good. <laughs> Morphos, you're supposed to be... Um, Look, in it fairness, persuading? I did better than you did. So don't talk shit. <laughs> not much. <laughs> and then I look over... And then I'm going to, because I'm very desperate, I'm going to try to persuade again. Um, going... no, only one persuade per attempt. Does that mean per party? Or... Okay, yes. then I'm going to switch to intimidation. No, that's, that's, a, okay, I'm shutting this down. Um, this is not an enemy encounter. Let's not make this an enemy encounter. We need or, help in or, order to take the... Hold uh, on, hold on, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, shut up. Because I rolled a six, and they have terrible wisdom, <laughs> aka neutral wisdom, aka zero, aka ten wisdom, they find Morthos's attempt at persuasion persuasive, and will indeed go and get at least an army of hobgoblins, a legion of hobgoblins. To help y'all out. All right, cool. So I don't have to intimidate them. No, oh, that was a terrible yeah. idea. This is Please why don't. you. This is why you let the DM say say what's going what's happening instead of going off on your own. Odolin thanks them and says, uh, "We really appreciate this working together. I hope we can." Clear the land of this scourge. Yeah. They do yes, say they do say it's gonna probably take a week to gather a legion together. Mm. That's okay. We can get the other. Um, we can go and organize the other tribes in the area to form a unified front to invade the da dungeon. That's honestly not a bad idea, but I don't know if that's like what Zal wanted us to do. <laughs> I mean, I wanted you all to go in there and. As a party and die, so there's that. <laughs> yeah, okay, look, I'm trying to be on your side. And then you say things like this, and I'm just like, look, I don't want us to die as a player character. See, uh, I, I actually have um, a party I think it's heart. fair if we, uh... <laughs> Why don't we maybe try the centaurs? We've been uh, friends <laughs> with them before. We've been friends with... Say, we have a lot of friends. Yeah, uh, who's the closest friends? The goblins the and the centaurs. Oh, and the Triatayel clan. They're in the mountains. Aren't we what? in the mountains? Something we no, could you're do. in the forests. This is oh. kind of a bad idea, but we could split the party in half, and then half of us could go to the mountains, and the other half could go to the desert okay you see, Never you know, i've been trying to be on your side but then you do things like this i rescind my plan hey 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 um you, you can't blame the dm for you are the oh. chuckling evilly <laughs> god damn it Sal. <laughs> i have hey i have to be honest here if we're gonna split party when um dnd wisdom says not to it's called, oh look, you guys travel for a mile and encounter. Possibly hostile encounter. We only have one ranger. If we had two rangers, it would be hard to do this. But we only have one. I say, Perhaps. All right, um, we need to track down the centaurs and tell them to prepare for the war. Perhaps we could trust the guildmaster to rally forces while we scout ahead. 
That slimy piece of garbage only paid us 4k gold. I have a feeling that <laughs> I have a feeling that slash talking about right now. Uh, uh -huh. so you cut out during a lot of that. <laughs> he didn't pay me the full amount. No, but uh, it was Morthos. You're the one who cut out. We didn't hear oh, what you said. Um, that that insult obviously wasn't aimed at the good master. Um, I I uh, Morthos agrees with um, Nefaria's plan, um, but then does point out that like in order for this plan to work, we would have to go back and tell the guild master to do that. And Unless the lazy one of us has, like, a spending. Okay, quick question. Does any of us have, like, a sending spell? I think it's, like, a cantrip, but you could send, like, a message with it. Does anyone have it? I, I don't think. I don't think any of us do, but why don't we ask one of the Hobble Goblins one of the Hobble to relay Goblins. that message on, relay that message to the Guildmaster on our behalf so we don't lose time? I don't have sending. I have mending, which isn't the same. <laughs> um, I agree with that plan. Is everyone else cool with that? Yeah, I guess. Me. I don't know how much we can really trust the Guildmaster. I think what? it's funny that you trust the Guildmaster more than you trust the Hobgoblins. You mean I trust the Hobgoblins more yeah, than the other the one? Yeah, the other one, sorry. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because they're mountain folk. Um, I talked to the Hobgoblins and I. And then I asked them, could you guys, could one of you run to the guild? You'll be safe. The guild doesn't attack first. Um, and instruct the guild master to send messages to all of our allies. I we can do that for ten gold. I give them I one give platinum. Them a, oh, I was about to give him the dagger eyes. Don't do that. I give him one platinum, and I have twenty five. Um. Also, Morthos, you didn't have to give about this premium 25 platinum. Everyone got 50. Yes, no, I, one, I gave it to Odolin, who was with us. Not Goblin's premium. And I'm holding Old Goblin's premium's money. Odolin also got 50. Really? Oh, yes. well, okay. Then she has an extra 25. That's fine. I don't care. I don't like money. My character, <laughs> my character right. doesn't really believe in me. <laughs> okay, well, okay. The character um, is an anarchist. Basically. He, uh, the, the goblin accepts the platinum and then goes off and then the and the other goblins go, so what do you want us to do, boss? Are they talking to me? They're, they're talking to the group as a whole. Oh. Okay. We want you, you to go to the guild hall and we want you to tell the, the guild master to send a message to our allies telling them that one goblin or one hobgoblin already went to do that. Oh, okay. Then I then I look and I turn to the other goblin. But the other goblin, I need you to go and rally your clan. Make sure to bring several legions because this is a war that will determine the fate of this world. I a boss and they. March, because you know, pop goblins are all militaristic and shit. That's why we should have killed the little these things when we had the chance. They're uh, our friends I... now. Don't do that. Um, are we ready to go to the dungeon? Uh, are you? Like, I don't at, know. At the at the head of the group, kind of like walking forward, like y y yes. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. No, Let's go. Walk. Also, I don't know why the DM is the one who is trying to be sassy because that encounter didn't have to happen. <laughs> hey, I I rolled a terrible luck roll for you guys. So you didn't have to happened. make the roll at all. <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> I have to because this is chaotic roll and things <laughs> chaotically happen. Well, are you confused? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into this dungeon non-violent. Uh, Yay! And and then you violent. and you guys and when you get to the dungeon doors, unlike the northern entrance, it's just a cave. You, you see, just a cave. As you come in, it's overgrown with moss. 
Uh, the outside is overgrown with moss. Um, the entrance of the cave is... I'm going to go with stone and, and earth. and It smells like death. As well like as, a, as, as well as, uh, it also looks like there was a bear activity in, as you could smell, um, bear feces and, um, you could see bear marks all over the trees and sit around the cave. But it looks like it's empty and, uh, what do you do? I so catch fireball. I... Uh, I have a prime, sorry, uh, primeval awareness, uh, the latter half of which allows me to um, my my favorite enemy, which are beasts. If I concentrate, I can. Uh, if I concentrate for one uninterrupted minute, uh, I can detect whether like any of them are present within five miles of me, uh, revealing their numbers. Um, Sorry, I lost the text. Uh, their numbers, uh, the creature's general direction and distance from us. So, yeah. Uh, th so I'm gonna sit there and concentrate, and use my primeval awareness to note whether or not there pretty much are any bears that we should be aware of that are within the vicinity. Kaylin, could you not cast Fireball? <laughs> it's so pretty, though. Uh, uh, no, because you, you're just Please don't casting... burn a second level spell slot. Yeah. Well, apparently it's a third level spell slot that she's burning. Oh, sorry, yeah. Don't, yeah, don't, don't, don't burn a third level spell. Look how much damage it does, wow. But yeah, uh, so Zal, do, uh, with with that primeval awareness, do I, like, are there any caves in a bear that I'm, or sorry, any, any bears in the cave that I'm detecting, or are they, like, further out? Uh, um, roughly, what's the numbering? You can sense that there's a family of bears, like, miles away from this cave. There's none inside this cave. In fact, it's oddly empty of any kind of beast that you could sense. Okay. So I'm going to relay that to the party, uh, that I sense no beasts nearby. However, it, and I'm going to note the oddity that I'm not even sensing a beast within the cave itself, like deeper within. Uh, and that my range on this kind of ability is, is, is some miles on it. So we could potentially you know, it's not necessarily beasts that are up ahead. We should proceed with caution. We should, I think we should wait for reinforcements. We should build a campment here and establish a base of operation. I agree. I'm going to glance over. Robinson. Let's find some place okay. quiet and the, uh, and see what happens. So at for this another point, two. Oh, sorry. Um, at this point, Morthos is going to be like, "We." Uh, uh, Morthos is going to chime in and be like, "Hey, um, if it comes to setting up a camp, we don't really have to set up a camp outside." I learned. Uh, I learned a few things or two while while we were adventuring, and I have a spell that can give us. Shelter. Um, it can't it can't give us a whole lot more than a basic shelter, but um it gives us a few neat things. The spell is called Tiny Hut. And um basically we can fit nine people of our size or smaller. It ends um if it ends abruptly if I try to fit more than nine people, but I 
can do a lot of stuff with it. So when it comes time for us to set up a camp, we have a pretty safe one, especially because I think one of our friends here, I say pointing over at Nefaria, has a few extra spells that we can use to secure the place. And it lasts for nine hours, which means that we can take a nice long rest in there. So I agree with the plan to set up a camp, but when it comes time to set up the camp, we're not going to have to be quite as worried as we would otherwise have to be. Can we That's see um... outside the hut? Are, are we able to see what's going yes. on? Yes, we can see outside the hut. That sounds good. So while Morpho says that, I'm going to start setting up traps. So that way, um, if we do somehow get attacked, then there will be uh, traps and maybe a few stockades for us to protect ourselves with. Before we do that, can we decide where the best vantage point is? Around here, a place <laughs> where we won't be immediately obvious, but can kind of keep an eye. Can I do um, like a survival check or maybe... Um... I'm going to say that the cave is on top of a hill and it's covered by treetops. Well, well, it's surrounded by trees and that um, there is another hill ne like nearby that you guys can set up to. Alright, oh, we should always take the highway. Over there. Okay. I don't have any protests. Is there anything uh, else we're going to do during the week as we're getting ready and watching? Uh, setting up traps. And setting up... Uh, Wait, setting basically. up traps will require survival checks. Okay. I think if we have anybody setting up traps... Well, hold on. Uh, Odalyn, do you have proficiency in survival? Let me look. Because um... if, if, we're, if we're setting up traps, um, I, I would say that I'd, I'd probably be the one to... You know, yeah, you should probably do it. You, you know who has proficiency in survival? Me. Who? I don't do know why I have. Yeah, I'll help you. Um, okay. For the life of me, I don't understand why I have proficiency in survival, but I see that beautiful check mark, and my. I don't know why either. Maybe it's because either you chose it, or as a as a bard, or it's from your. I background. think it's from my. I think it's from my background. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But my background is entertainer, so apparently I wasn't a good entertainer if I constantly had to be, like, moving from town to town. But I mean, honestly, that checks out. <laughs> but yeah, I'll help out. Um, I can offer, I can, I, I guess I can give advantage to um, Nefaria. Yeah, what's, what's your survival mod? Is it better than six? No, it's four. So yours is definitely okay. better. Yeah. So then, yeah, with advantage, I'll set up some traps. Uh, how many rolls do you want for that? Um, it'll be one roll per trap. Okay. How many traps do we want as a party? Um, as many as we can make. About uh, four. One for each north, south, east, west. It'll take yeah, one right. hour. It'll take one hour to make each trap. We also want I traps in like southeast, southwest, just to cover our ground. Uh, I think we'll do the, the the four. I like that idea. So I'll do the rolls for those. <laughs> and these are just going to be like snare traps, basically. So like the old gimmick of you get you, you fall for the trap, you get pulled up kind of thing, like counterweighted. Uh, well, they need to be lethal. They don't need to be lethal. We just need uh... to... I mean, if they could be lethal, that would be cool, but... Yeah, no, they, I, like pit traps, almost. Would be we're annoying. asking people to send their reinforcements. We don't want them to accidentally kill our reinforcements, either. Well, that's, that's why exactly. we'll tell all the reinforcements where to set. Yes, yeah, but what but... if they get here when we don't see them? It's better for them to not be lethal. And by the way, Zal, there's the, the four advantage rolls that I've got for that, so. 
at, um, you can tell that the three that you've the first three that you've made are really good, and anyone's passive perception on average would not be able to notice them until it's too late. But if you want to spend an extra hour making the last one better, you can. I think I'll do that. Uh, we'll give that another advantage roll, since Marthos is probably still helping me. Yep. Nice. There we go. <laughs> and And you're able to make the last one uh, even better. It's more camouflaged and most people, and now the other people's pat, um, passive perception wouldn't be able to uh, tell it's there until it's too late. Okay. Or until okay. they or, or until they have a really good perception check to tell that it's there. And then, um, just, like, uh, so, are, are we spending, like, a week here? We're basically waiting for the forces to rally around us? Is that what's happening? Uh, well, uh -huh. uh, uh, well, a work week is around, like, five days, and that's what you meant by the week, so. Okay, so, but that's what we're doing. We're, we're spending that time, uh, waiting, basically. Waiting Essentially. and preparing. Okay. Uh, for extra thought. protection... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Mother. I, I thought that we were going to scout ahead, and then we were going to retreat every once in a while. We were, But since the plan seems to be that we're just going to chill here, I'm cool with that. Uh, at first, uh, until a few minutes ago, I was just under a different impression. Oh, uh, I mean, if you want to do those scouting things... I uh, mean, if you I'm... want to do, do a scout, I please think... do. That sounds like a great idea. I like it. Yeah, I think Morpheus should scout it by himself with no backup. Well, no, let's let's all yeah. scout together uh, a little ways in. We'll come back out, and then every night we can maybe go a little further. Yeah. Also, out I of like character, um, there was obvious. This was obviously supposed to be a thing where we had a violent encounter, where we had a combat. Um, obviously, that was supposed to be the setup here. I feel kind of bad. If we do all of this and Zal doesn't get to do his combat thing. Yeah, let 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 the DM have you guys fight something in Morpheus, please. I do okay. want to throw fireball. So in the meantime here, uh, since we're going to be scouting ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and cast this on us. Nice. And uh after I cast that, I'm going to look at you guys and I'm gonna say we are going to be very quiet. Follow? <laughs> as long as you do the dexterity spell checks. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Uh, so bonus. Yes. You know, and I'm going to go ahead and lead the way with uh, entering, like, stealth kind of sneaking up amongst the trees. Um, so I've got, I've got 30 stealth right now. Uh, so, um, yeah. I have 32 stealth. <laughs> yeah. I basically so, cease to exist with a stealth with a stealth check that high. Um yep. you, you know what's fun? There's actually shadows with within the game. I was looking through the monster manual and I was like, there's fucking shadows in this game. I could have used their stats instead. Uh, yeah. So, I'm gonna it looks like to... me and Morthos are sneaking up. So, anybody else join us? Um, I'll join. Two. We all have a plus ten. We all might as well try. Uh, except no, Odalyn has, like, disadvantage of her check. Because oh, armor. that's true. Well, I thought Splint... Well, I'll just do it. It's heavy armor. It has disadvantage. Well, that's, uh, uh 21. Oh, sorry. You okay? Alright, Haraf, roll stealth. Alright. Uh, please, me logged in. Okay, good. So, stealth roll. Let me add 10. And uh, stealth roll. is. Right here. Wow, I have, zero, I have a zero stealth. So. Nice! <laughs> Except you have a natural 30. We did. Honestly, this was great. This was a great idea. I know how to sneak. I sneak. 
You sneak really good. Apparently. I am a sorcerer. I don't know if that helps, but okay. Um. It, it doesn't, because you don't have a natural stealth modifier, but whatever. I should be able to give myself a natural stealth modifier now because I rolled so high. Uh, no. Level of no is really high. But is it as high as 30? It, it's higher than 30. <laughs> what about 50? Um, it's higher than 10 than infinity. Eh. I'm ready okay, to do well a then. violence. Okay, then so. I do Omega. Uh, so um, I'm assuming since uh, we're all sneaky, I do all Alpha sneaky and Omega. Omega. Um, so, while you're, while you're Go sneaking, ahead, you, um, do perception? You, you could all do, because as you're entering the cave, nice. you're, you're all, uh, because you're scouting, you have to do perception. That's a right. dirty 20. Eleven. Or nineteen. Okay. Yes. I have eleven here. Um and I mean Morthos has a dirty twenty, but it works for this. <laughs> uh you can you you can see a large plant like thing in the middle of the cave. And it seems to have several bodies entangled in its vines. I had the ability to get a speak with plant spell, and I chose not to do it, because I didn't think it would be useful. I'm disappointed in you, Morphos. Well, now you know. (laughs) Knowing is half the power. So, with my nature check, would I be able to identify it? Uh... You know it's some kind of mount thing, but you're not entirely sure. It's funny, as a as a ranger, I don't have a nature mod, and I don't have a nature proficiency, so like I'm not even... I don't even... Dang it, I rolled uh, worse than Harafinston, and I only did good. I only did the same you, you because of my modifier. Same. No, I rolled worse. I have a much higher modifier than Harafinston does. So, like, can I turn around to Morphos and slap him in the face and say, Think deeper, think harder, I know you know this. <laughs> do that I would like to throw, like, a pebble or something at them. And, uh, um... <laughs> he, yeah, <laughs> Nymphius just thinks it's a plant, it's not harmless, guys. <laughs> our, our ranger is so good at nature. <laughs> it's harmless, it's not gonna hurt anyone, it's fine. Since we have incredibly high stealth, um, unless this thing has some sort of like supernatural way of sensing us, which it's a plant underground, it probably does. Can we get a surprise round on it? Um. Oh, you want to attack it? Honestly, it's a plant, and there's bodies around it, and it's underground. My intuition is telling me this plant wants to eat us and possibly make us into zombies. All right, well, I'm just going to cast a fireball, then. I yeah, was I mean, the only have... one who saw it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm... Are you are you going to be relaying the fact that you've seen and noticed this to us? I yeah, was going probably to, should. But, like, I don't want us to... One, there's lots of plants that have a fire, which is weird. But, um, yeah, we all know that there's a creepy corpse plant um, just chilling. <laughs> There's a creepy zombie plant just chilling in the middle of this cave, which is already a red flag. We should um, leave. I, I I have to ask all of you. Um, are you with? Did you? So, um, because a lot of you have dark vision within like sixty feet. Yeah. You could only have seen it if you were within sixty feet of it. Yeah. So. Part of me ha- so, 
Hold on a second while I add all of its stats in. Because I, well, actually, you guys have, like, really high stealth rolls, so I yeah. guess it didn't really see you. <laughs> <laughs> I was I, I just, I just remembered that. that, I just remembered that, and I was like, even if I did a perception check for it, it wouldn't have even seen you in the first place. I was gonna, I was gonna wait and see if you were gonna try and be, ha ha, see if you, I'm glad it, you didn't. <laughs> it's like, it's not like it has life sense or anything, which would completely invalidated does spell this? Rules. Yeah, because life sight alone. No, no it does it. No, it does not. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I was like, it doesn't have life sight. It's, it's not a vampire cloud. I turn over to Morpheus and I say, what is that thing? What kind of it's plant a, is that? It's a, it's a freaky zombie plant, and that means it's no good. It's no friend of ours. I, I can't talk I mean, to plants. I mean, technically, you don't know if it's a zombie plant or not. You said I, that uh, it was surrounded with corpses, and I got a 20 on my perception. I could at least see the body. Can I well, like, it's uh, surrounded by corpses, but it's not. But the corpses aren't a part of the plant. Sure, they're not. But if there's a lot of corpses around, it's a bad plant. <laughs> <laughs> collect corpses, so. So... Well, I mean, I mean, I wait, mean this thing's gonna... if you guys want to fight it, I don't know. Wait, can I do a religion anything, check anything. and see if this plant is used in any, like, sort of religious ritual? Uh, go ahead. I, I have proficiency. I can aid. You can have advantage. Alright, I no. have advantage. I mean, you got a 16. Okay, I'm not gonna uh, talk. <laughs> um, um, you you can tell that it's not doing any kind of ritual, it's just being there. It, it's just there, being there. Cut it down. It's being a plant. It's okay, not, apparently we're gonna do a violence. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm of mind with Odalyn here. Uh, okay. If we... Yeah. Do, uh, I... Going off of Morthos's previous inquiry, are we going to get a, a a surprise round since we're all stealth attacking this thing? Uh, all of you go. Yes. Yeah, this will be great. Okay. All right. Um, so is so, there one of us who wants to take the attack first, or are we going to roll initiative? I will. I'll take the attack first, and I'm going to cast fireball. Why did you have to ask? Why? Sorry, I, I will refrain from asking that in the future. <laughs> Honestly, there's a small part of me that's kind of proud of Harafenston right now, because, like, both Harafenston and Callan, they've really wanted to cast that fireball. Just, for the long- this campaign has been going on for months, and, like, one of the first things that Callan did in one of our first fights was try to cast fireball. And at the time, we said no. And now, she can do it. And I mean, if that's not, like, goals, I don't know what is. <laughs> um, and it does 24 damage this time. Well, it has it's to be still... Save. Yeah, ho hold on, I still have to do all of its stuff. So... No Callan, <laughs> Callan is ready for violence. I was born ready. Very excited to murder this plant. Also, I'm so proud of myself! Because I chose a monster that is going to fuck over the fireball. I knew, I, I knew it. I I was I mentioned earlier that there were lots of plants with fire resistance. There's only a few that have fire immunity, but like, how dare you? It's one thing to keep me from violence. It's another hey. to prevent somebody who's wanted to cast this fireball for years or months. <laughs> hey, uh, but don't you all remember except uh, Nymphius because his character wasn't here the last time I subjected the group to like several instances of vampiric um, I hated it. clouds I hated it so much, and it invalidated the rogues' um, stealth. It was awful. It was just the worst. 
Also, also should, should everyone else? Uh, should should we? I know we're not doing it now because uh, well, there's no initiative. Well, count, but should well, we do an initiative thing? Um. Yes, you will have to. Also, if you are all going to attack it, I would recommend doing it now. Yeah. Okay. Um. I guess I'll go next. And I'll also make sh- also make sure to do the um to click your token and then how do I do? Yeah, do- I don't okay. have a uh, computer, so how do I do my token? <laughs> I'll add yours in. Okay. Oh, whoops! I, I rolled it twice. My bad. Um, I'll, I'll take go the ahead 24. and roll initiative right now. Um, I want to do my thing, but I don't know how. Um, my initial is probably not going to be very good, but you know, that's not bad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and roll my two Elder's Blast. Um, that's, I'm, that's, I'm going to do two Elder's Blast, and then I'm going to give her Aftonstone a Bardic Inspiration. Um, that's 112 Finally. and 111, and her Aftonstone gets a Bardic Inspiration. Oh, okay. Oh, cast that those, probably do, those probably don't hit. Probably um, not. I'm going to have to add your process because you didn't click your. I don't token. know how to do the token thing. I don't know how to like. You you click it on the oh dang in it the my game? token was already in. I didn't see it. My bad. Oh well, I have to do that now. I can re-roll initiative if you want. No, I'm no, fine. no, no, no. It's fine. Okay, cool. I'll just add your zero. My initiative uh, is better was... than her happens since. <laughs> okay, um, everyone's... Well, that's a nat 20 on my second one, but what's <laughs> Um, but... So you attacked twice and got a nat 20? Uh, yeah, because uh, I have uh, extra attack. Oh, yes, you do. Um, hold on. One little second. Uh, it's thought... alright, no, no, no rush. The, the the DM takes the time to do stuff because he never actually plans things out before. Snake, you okay. are being really active right now. I should have named my snake uh, Dendar. I'm also going to go ahead. World. I'm also going to go ahead and throw my hunter's mark on that. So I thought I thought you were going to hunter's mark before he dealt their attack damage. I mean, it it would. It's like. I, I forgot to just mention that though, so. Because when I click my Hunter's Mark, it automatically rolls the damage for it, so. Um, just say that you cast your Hunter's Mark. Okay. And then. And then roll every time you. Every time I say you hit. Okay. Which is going to take a while when I actually say you hit. Because I'm doing stuff. So. Um. Morthos. Yes. Your Elder's Blast missed. Both of them? Yes. Got it. Um, Drag Worker. Also known as Nithius. Both of your attacks hit. Okay. And well, I rolled uh, damage for one of them already. Um. Actually, all I see is the hunter's mark. Also. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. Sorry. Uh, there's still the. What happens when a crit happens? Don't your doesn't your Colossus Slayer oh yeah. Yep. Well technically and your I Colossus should... check Oh yeah, once once per attack. Right. I remember. You want me to swing or wait? Uh do so. And I'm rolling for a critical hit. Also uh, target Jared. is pushed back three well, five feet. Um I uh that's a hit. And hold on, I still have to add in its attacks. So if I that, shout out... Hmm. Is it fire and immune? Or is it just 
or is it just like resistant because you never did the dc dexterity save thing hold or... on okay hold on yeah. I, I'm, I'm adding it stuff okay it's about to say if i call out to zariel to uh bless this fireball well it will um will she help out uh no because you're against her aren't you You've been Why against her be this against entire. Her? You've been against her this entire campaign without knowing it. Apparently. But I've been. I've been the one who wants to kill things for. Her. You're just That's admitting cool. to being a demon worshiper. That'd What's wrong with cool worshiping demons? Worshiping. What have they ever done to you? I mean, devil worshiper, not demon. That was my bad. What's wrong with devils? They've never done anything to you. Um, also, Dre. Never. No, yeah, never mind. So, uh, Odalyn, your first attack hit. Your second attack missed. So, roll for that. I'm still adding the stuff, and I will roll the death save with, with, when I get to it. Just so you know, I'm, I'm far away from thing. I know we're doing Theater of the Mind, but that's cool. I'm not in its range. My attack's gonna hit up to 120 feet away. I have dark vision. I am 60 feet away. Yeah, yeah you're still within its... Away. You're still within its... You, you yeah, it. yeah, like, it can see me. That's not... I'm not saying it can. I'm saying that, like, unless this thing has, like, hella range on whatever attacks it has, which would be weird for a plant, it... It probably can't do much to me right now, which is the way I like it. Um. Okay. And. Yeah, okay. That, that's fine with me. Um. Alright, I roll its initiative roll. So I'm going to Oops. Wow. Is that a, is that wow good for us or bad for us? Uh very good for you, I guess. Yay. I am guessing. <laughs> so. I like that. Okay. Nice to round that up, actually. <laughs> um, who is the higher dex between Horatinson and Oakman? Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm asking some. I'm asking the people who, who I, I have a question to. I have fourteen. My dex is fourteen. And I'm checking mine now. Um, and uh, I will do it. Dex. Give me a sec. I gotta switch okay. devices. Okay. And I will. And it logged me out. Yay. Dexterity saving throw. It's failed the dexterity saving throw, and I and Burn. I'll add its token. So have fun, guys. Ah, oh, damn it! All right, I have to log back in. We should arrange ourselves to be where we would be. I would be very far away. I don't. I don't think um, that the ranger would be right in front of it to hit it with an arrow. All right, and 
How much damage did Golden do with that fireball? Oh. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, uh, you should move your token. Oh, because if you were hitting it with an arrow, you probably wouldn't have been right in front of it, so... Well, it's here of a mind, technically, so... Does uh, I'm, back. I'm back with the more, so it's at 60 feet away. All right, so my dexterity so... is 10. Alright, well then, um, Odin, Odin is before you. There we go. And just steam eighteen. Everything's good. We're still going on. There's violence. There's some cool things going on. I love the violence. Sounds good. Uh, Morthos missed. Um, Morthos gets hit. Um, you do do the hunter's mark damage before and uh, six plus ten eighteen. 20, do the math. Um, Odelin did 8 damage to it. So it's dead, right? No! Oh. In, in fact, if, if someone does a nature check, uh, they could tell what it is. I'm about to. Let's see I'm doing it. Though. Is it good? Nope, that's the not one, baby. <laughs> you can't even identify if it's a plant or not. Yeah, I, I look at it, I'm like, is that a cat? <laughs> is that um, really okay. a plant? Um, Harakenstein and Odlin can tell it's a shambling mound, which means it has resistances to fire and cold damage and complete immunity to lightning. In fact, it gains HP when you deal lightning to it. It's all you know. Oh, lovely. It's all you know. So don't hit with lightning damage, or you're possibly going to die. And I, alright, so I look over at Morphos, and I say to him, Look, I know you're, I know you think it's a cat, but it's not a freaking cat. I look it's over a, <laughs> It's a... Um, what, what was it called against that? Uh, shambling uh, Mound. Shambling Mound. It's a freaking shambling mound. Oh. <laughs> you, you, you stupid bar. <laughs> Look, the bar doesn't have to be smart. The bar has to be good at talking, and I'm okay at that, at best. <laughs> yeah, we can obviously see that with your, uh... Like, is it a plant or is it an animal? It's, not a... <laughs> it's clearly not a plant. <laughs> clearly. What do I know about what? So what? What do I know about the shimmering uh, mound? Shambling. <laughs> Shambling mound as a plant. Like, is it good for medicinal reasons or what? Does it eat people? Um, you you know it's able to engulf people and deal tons of damage to them on every day. Oh, okay, lovely. And, and that they were uh, they're spawned by lightning. And or fey magic because you know they are assholes. <laughs> so can we feed uh, Morphos to like this that? plant? As a descendant of fey, rude. <laughs> <laughs> I like how quiet that was. <laughs> Uh, the, the DM is sorry, not sorry. So, so, uh, I mean, I agree with Shia. You should, you, you guys should make amends to it by throwing lightning at it. I'm not sorry. It eats people. <laughs> wow, I thought you were against killing more folks. Um, Nefara, it is your turn. Playing it safe, hitting it with a uh, long breath. Hey. 
Okay, that's a hit. And that is also a hit. So that... Uh, both of your, um, Hunter's Marks trigger. Yep. And then one nice. Colossus Slayer triggers. That's a whole so, lot of damage. So, how much damage is that? That's uh, 18, 18 23. 20, it's 35. 25. Yeah, 35. Yeah. <laughs> and one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> is it dead yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, now it's Morthos. To... Uh, Morthos unless... is gonna. Oh. Uh, un 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 unless um, the fire one has been moved somewhere. No, I'm staying back. Okay. Just lobbing arrows at this thing. <laughs> I could. Okay. okay, Morthos, do a thing. I could actually move a lot farther than this. And... Two. Um, I'm gonna fire two Elders blasts. Um, for anyone who's curious as to why I can do two Elders Blasts, uh, Warlocks of 5th level, if 5th character level, get the ability to launch two Eldritch Blasts instead of one. That's awesome. One hits, one misses. Um, yes. Seven force damage, and yes. then I'm going to give um, Odolin a Bardic Inspiration. She's fighting it up close, and that's scary. That's one. Oh, uh, also, that's D8. That's not D6 anymore. Fifth level bards, upgrade the deck. <laughs> Hello, Sheena. They're fighting something near the uh, last part of the game. <laughs> because when, th when this combat's over, it's the end of the game. Because it's almost nine. And that's, my and that's when I go to bed. <laughs> I was thinking of saying that, but I thought it was going to be me. And then you just, like, made fun of yourself. Uh, no. It's Theater of the Mind right now, Sheena. And, uh, they're fighting a Shambling Mound within the entrance of the dungeon. Which is in the Forest of Hills. And I don't have the dungeon set up. A fight at the lodge would probably mean that the party would die. Why? Like, why, though? <laughs> because there's, like, 12-level characters. No, no, and, no, and, you're and misunderstanding us. You're, misunder oh. you're misunderstanding us. It's cool if there were enemies who weren't other characters at the lodge for us to fight. If they were just like, hey, we're going to invade the town, and we're like, stop that. Oh, you're talking about that. Yeah, that's yeah. probably the advantage of invasion. So. Yeah, yeah, I think <laughs> that'd be cool. Not if we're fighting the guildmaster. That would make me very sad. I mean, I think he's, like, level 20. I want to take his job. I don't want to fight him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, you you gave her uh, part of, a one D card of inspiration. Yep. Other one, it's your turn. Other one, do things. Do double attack and this. And both of them hit without using a card of inspiration. Full damage. Alright, that is 18 damage. I feel for this poor Shamblin now. It's getting destroyed. Her happens then. Huh? Um, is that all you're going to do, or the rest? Okay. And she's muted, so I can't get. Okay. Her happens to your turn. <laughs> Alright, so... I am going to go ahead and cast... If you uh... cast Fireball, you have to be careful, Spell, or you're going to hurt Odolin really badly. Oh, if you were about to say Morphos, I would have been like, Fire... Fireball? Yeah, immediately. Um, I'll because cast she's... Okay, uh, that's a nat 20. So I roll the... what happens. I'm right. glad the thing has fire... I'm glad the thing has cold resistance and not um, cold immunity. Fire resistance. It, no, it has both. This was told to you. 
Yes, I told you this. Oh, what? And you I ignored forgot. this. Um, I mean, still does a fair amount of damage. That's still a total of, let me see, three, six. It's still well, seven damage total. Well, down. it doesn't do anything because it's not actually carrying anything. So, because it's a mound, it's not a, not a humanoid character. So, um, how much time is it? So, seven. three plus. I'm going to add it up and then divide it in half anyway, but seven it is. Yeah, it's seven rounded down. <laughs> because resistance lads and bosses. And people, and whatever, don't care anymore. <laughs> Level of care I have when it's like almost bedtime is goes really down really quickly. <laughs> and as the jumping is down, it's time. Oh no, it's gonna get to do something. Yes. Um, it is going to. <clears throat> Slam. Uh, does a 23 hit? Of course it does. It's slamming Morphos, right? No, it's slamming the person closest to it, who is Odolin. Oh. So she takes 9 damage. And now I'm just going to make it public, because that way I don't have to hide it. You know, really. <laughs> Um, it doesn't get to engulf her, because that's a thing that, um, Shambling Mouse can do if it hits twice with the slam, but it did not hit twice, so Odolin is three, it did some damage. If that's bad or good, I don't know, but that's all it's going to do. So, Nefara, do the thing. Potentially, you're going to end it in this next attack. Yeah, because you do just ludicrous amounts of damage. Also, I just noticed that all my spells are either fire, thunder, or cold. So you would heal it! <laughs> Nefara Nefar could very well be end fight in two rounds right now. Uh, oh, yeah. and Radiant. Both They're of those, radiant. I'm assuming, are hits? Yes. Yes. It's AC is like 15. Oh yeah, even without the Hunter's Mark or the Colossus Slayer damage. It's dead. It's dead. <laughs> this lasted two rounds. Because you did a total of like, because its <laughs> remaining HP was 14 and um, you did 21 damage to it. I did not. 21 plus 5, 26. And I'm saying without the Hunter's Marks and the Colossus Slayer. Our two encounters today were the two shortest encounters we've ever had. Unfortunately. I mean, I don't think it's unfortunate. You got to have your... No one, none of us got hurt aside from Odolin and I'll cast healing on Odolin. Um, also, we're about to go do a rest thing. So, but yeah. Beautiful. A short way? A short rest. Because remember, hey. slog of rest, right? I mean, we can do long rests here because of our various combinations of spells. Um, if, I if should have had you all fight more Shadow Bells. That would have been fair. <laughs> Tria, look, Tria's on your side in this. She says that next time we need to do more fighting. Uh, I like uh I like Tria's suggestion. In fact, it'll be the next time. Or maybe a puzzle. Nice. Or so or, much chaos. Or, so or, much or a trap. Or, or Just something. give me something to fireball at least. You did fireball, but it had resistance to fireball. Honestly, <laughs> I stand the decision. Like at this point, given how weak it was, just because we have like a ranger who did. I think the ranger in this encounter did like almost seventy points of damage. Which is just an insane amount of damage. 
Uh, that's what happens when there's the revised ranger for the UA, and it basically does tons of damage because the regular ranger is garbage. I'm, I'm gonna go back through this log and add it all the, the, uh, all the damage. Because I, I like the beam. I know that you did 38 damage on your second attack roll, which was not the like one that killed only... it. <laughs> just give him a few more levels so he'll be able, and you won't have to worry about Zariel. I know, like, we'll just be able to have this fucking ranger come out of nowhere and be like, surprise! <laughs> but I you'll mean... probably want to summon Zariel just to kill her. I, I mean, technically, he does even more damage than the fucking rogue ever did. I know. In fairness, he started off at a much higher level. And also, like, Isaf was new to D&D. So, like, it, it, it's kind of not fair to compare the two. But, like, Jesus Christ, Nefaria. Like, you did at least 70 points of damage in this combat encounter. And a Shambling Mound, I think it has, like, 150-something. You did over half of its HP. Um, in in the well, actually, the hit points in like the the monster man. Okay, I'm going to show the stream its stats so everyone can see this. Eighty six damage. It, its HP as like an average is one hundred and thirty six. And it's and the roll for HP is sixteen D ten plus forty eight. <laughs> I rolled that and got a twenty one. I should have just maxed its HP just to be fair. In fairness, I normally don't like it when you max HP because normally you have a history of trying to do it when the encounters are ridiculous, like when we fought the trolls. But if this was only a single enemy, yeah. Like, if it's a single enemy uh, versus, like, four of us, then yeah, you should max the HP. Because I have uh, two-weapon fighting style and, like, dual short swords, so, like, up close with my extra attack, I, I get four attack. And Hunter's Mark procs off of any... So. You did three quarters of this thing's damage by yourself. <laughs> yeah. So, I guess so, yeah. Morpos, I don't think we have to worry about Zariel. <laughs> it's just we have cool. like Legolas in the flesh with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A female Legolas. I'm going to go with that. And at the same time, I I don't even have the the adventure book for like Zariel stats. So even if I do have Zeriel in here and you guys are fighting her single-handedly, I will have to max out her fucking stats. It's in Zeriel's stats are in um, Jesus, what's the name? Descent into Avernus. I don't own the book. I can I can share the PDF with you if that's a thing to do. God, I hope we don't fight Zariel. If I mean, we do, I, that's a I, bad sign. I, I mean. You have a fifth level, um, you, you, you have a fucking fifth level ranger here that does tons of damage. We would die. Day. That's fine with me. It's not fine with me, though. It is perfectly fine with me. And with that, my, ev everyone watching, you hear from Starto just caught in. It is. The end of Chaotic Roll for the night. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye, Take everyone. care, and cheers. Yeah. Adios. We did a violent...